And it's like, she pops up and I'm like, mm, let me see what this is. I, I never really paid attention to magic, so. Then I come back to my phone and then she messaged me on the app. I didn't know who she was at the time, but like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she gotta be good. So, so you was really the catch. I always say we, in the truth. men are catch, man. I always say we the catch. Man. So in truth, was well, Jonathan Owens ain't really want some more bottles. Is what you're saying. I was afraid to commit. I'm like, ah, I'm just my third year. You know, I'm trying to, ah, I'm like, it's kind of early. Because if she wouldn't have messaged me, chances were, chances are, like, I probably wouldn't have. So I wouldn't have thought to, you know. Um, but she, she messaged me, and I mean, like I said, the rest is history, man. When I saw this moment in the Jonathan Owens interview, this man, for those of you who don't know who he is, he is Simone Biles' husband. When I saw this moment in the famous, infamous interview, I felt, oof, I felt a chill. Look at his face. Look, look at the facial expression. Let me slow it down. Look at the nonchalant, dismissive, unimpressed body language that he's displaying. He's making it very, very clear that he wants the interviewers to know that he was not really impressed with Simone when he saw her. That shrug, that... That was very clearly intended to let the interviewers know, eh, it was nothing to me. I wasn't really impressed. And why would you want people to think that you weren't floored the first time you saw a photo of your future wife? Why wouldn't you? First of all, I don't believe him. Um, I believe that this was theater. He was putting on this, this very macho, uninterested, I'm the prize kind of attitude to somehow impress the gentlemen that were interviewing him. And there may be a, a million reasons for that, but the fact that he didn't really think about how that would make his wife feel, it bothered me. It really did. And I, along with everybody else, was on the bandwagon that this man doesn't love his wife. He's not interested in her. I was just as outraged as everybody else. But then I took a couple steps back and I thought about it. And I realized that my outrage about this moment in an interview with a man that isn't even my husband doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, Simone Biles chose this man she chose him she she married him look at her grinning from ear to ear whatever this is it's working for her so why would she care what i or hundreds of thousands of people out there think and what makes me think that my opinion is that important Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas, New Year's, holidays. I was sick for most of the holidays. I think I might have had COVID. I was pretty sure that it was a severe flu or cold. But I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe it was COVID. Yeah. But I hope you had a much healthier holiday season. We're back. Let's get it. So I saw this TikTok on Twitter. And when I saw this, I... It resonated with me immediately. Listen to this. I want to talk to you guys about something I've decided to call the what about me effect. The what about me effect is when someone sees something that doesn't really pertain to them or they can't fully relate to and they find a way to make it about them instead of recognizing that maybe they are just not the target audience for that thing. I will give you an example. If anyone has seen the bean soup video, where this girl, she makes like a bean soup that's high in iron to help with your period and it has like a gajillion different beans in it and it's called bean soup. And she got all of these comments being like, well, what should I do if I don't like beans? Well, how do I make this without the beans? Can you substitute the beans? Instead of just saying, hey, if I don't like beans, maybe I shouldn't watch this bean soup video. And before someone makes this about something it's not, I'm coming to you as a leftist who cares a lot about equity and inclusion. So those are not the things I'm talking about. 
I'm talking about when I sit down after a long day and I come onto God's internet and I see videos that are like, here's how to put your hair up into a really cute hairstyle. And someone comments and is like, what if I'm bald? So when you come onto this app and you see a video and you have the urge to comment something like, well, what about my very specific scenario? Or, well, not everyone can blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna encourage you to stop, use your noggin, and remember that things are nuanced. Not everything can apply to every single person and there doesn't always need to be a specific accommodation for you. Ain't that the truth? Didn't she just preach a word? We live in a time where we, because of social media, we have convinced ourselves that our opinion is so, so, so important that the world is entitled or the world must be blessed with our opinion. Now, here I am in my YouTube channel where I do a lot of commentary, where I share my opinion about current events. But that is really who we are nowadays. We are the people who believe that when we feel really strongly about something, we have to share it. It's as if we're depriving the world of vital information <laughs> if we don't tell them exactly how we feel. I remember when Twitter first came on the scene. I'm not exactly sure how long ago it was. I'm gonna put the year it was founded on the screen. But I remember when it came out and it was a service through which you would check in with your followers and just let them know, hey, I just ate this sandwich. Hey, I just came home from a movie. This is what I think. And I remember thinking at that time, who cares? This is not gonna succeed. This is so ridiculous. I mean, who cares about the little minutia of your everyday life. But it turns out the entire social media landscape exists because number one, we have this need to share with everybody what we're doing and what we're thinking. And number two, it seems like people really want to know. As species go, we human beings are extremely social. Human connection is extremely important for our survival, for our longevity for our health, not just mental, but physical. We need to be connected with people. And in this age of social media, we have replaced physical social connections with virtual ones. And they have become in many instances, even more important than the actual physical connection. So we think I can't be the only person who's gone to a restaurant and seen two people seated across from each other on a table and they're on their phones, probably communicating with other people, maybe people they don't even know, catching up with the shenanigans of people they will never meet in their lives. But there's this sense, this, this immediacy that we have to have. I need to know what is happening. I need to know what the world out there is doing. And this has created some kind of a bastardization of what we really crave, which is actual connection with real people in real life. But the brain, it seems like it, it can't really tell the difference anymore. And so because we feel this connection with virtual entities, we feel left behind when the rest of the world is doing something that doesn't involve me. And so we feel this is happening. I don't like it, but they seem to like it. Let me throw a wet blanket on their enjoyment. Let me let them know that they're not allowed to enjoy something or to have something if it doesn't involve my approval. <laughs> and it's kind of sick. It's kind of weird. This what about ism, this what about me has gone into overdrive. And so when Simone Biles, who is a very beloved public figure, the most decorated Olympian in history, just a magnificent athlete, extremely talented, but also very, very likable. She seems really warm and caring and, and, and has the, the most beautiful smile. She beams. And so to see this gentleman who is privileged to be married to this person we perceive to be a treasure, to have the honor of being her husband and to just kind of dismissively behave like, yeah, it's no big deal. Who is she to me? I'm the prize. 
Not only do we feel that it's disrespectful to Simone, it's disrespectful to us because we like her, we love her. So we're taking this very personal. And the more I look at the interview and I see the little attitudes and I, I see what was going on, it's very clear that this was something, this was kind of an inside joke between him and Simone that got played out in the public. But the joke didn't land because it didn't feel like a joke. It felt like he was really seriously letting us know that he doesn't worship this person that we all worship. But guys, it doesn't pertain you. Yeah, you may love Simone. I know, I, I adore her. But if she likes it, shouldn't we just love it? If she was giggling her way through that interview, shouldn't we just giggle too and be like, oh, okay, well, I mean, she, she seems happy. She's been putting out a series of tweets kind of letting you know, I mean, guys, seriously. I'm okay. I'm unbothered. I'm happy. Can you just be happy for me? But people are not slowing down because it has gone from we're outraged on behalf of Simone to I'm outraged for me. <laughs> I'm mad at him for what he did to me, to my feelings. There are a lot of women who are upset not just because they feel that he doesn't love Simone or he doesn't appreciate her, but it's triggering feelings from a lot of women who feel unlovable, who when they saw Simone Biles, this overachiever, pull a guy that to a lot of them seems like the ultimate prize, it validated a lot of women who identify with Simone because they look like her and they might be that overachiever that gets looked over by the by the jocks. And seeing him not cherish her and almost peel the curtain to this fantasy that everybody was going, oh, look at them, they look so cute together. It triggered this feeling of, I knew it. I knew somebody like me wasn't lovable. I mean, I knew somebody like Simone wasn't lovable, but it's really personal. It's really a reflection of how you feel about yourself and that fear that you have that maybe you cannot be loved the way you wish you could be loved. And that is why so many people were triggered. And I just want to invite everybody to please just take a step back, realize this is not about you, and understand that maybe you don't have the full story of what's going on over there. Maybe he does worship the ground she walks on. Maybe he adores her behind closed doors. And this was just a little funny joke that he did in front of the guys. You know how men are when they're in front of other men. You know how the bros get when they're trying to act like, eh, I'm not really into her. But then behind closed doors, they're baby talking to each other. They have cutesy little nicknames for one another that they would be mortified if the bros saw them in that vulnerable position. The thing that made me rethink this whole thing was watching a video um, that was put out by April Butcher. I love April. Um, her and her husband, Brian, they sometimes do joint videos. And they were talking about the situation and, you know, they were defending the, the marriage saying, what is it to us if they, I mean, they seem like a cute little couple. And then Brian mentioned something about Simone's husband that I wasn't aware of. Did you tell me something about his mama? Yeah. So Simone came out and she said, because it was asked of her, well, why did you even get with him? Like, how did this even begin? He has a mother with a handicap. And she sees how he takes care of his mom. He checks in on her on a regular basis. He takes care of her. He buys things for her. He takes care of her any way that she needs. She doesn't have to want for anything. He puts her as a priority and making sure she's good. And always speaks very highly of her, very respectful. And Simone noticed that. She got a chance to see how he interacts with her. And she said that she felt very impressed because she was like, wow, if he can respect and treat his mom so well, well, I just could imagine how he would treat me. And then he began to show her what type of man and what kind of gentleman he was. And she said, you know what? It starts at home. So if he's treating her right, then he knows that she's got that he's got some good standards and some good morals. And then she goes on to say how 
you know, he tries to do little things for her, his mom, as well as Simone, just because to let them know that he cares, whether it's flowers or sending cars or in between the season when he's out of town, he'll send her letters or little things to just to make her feel special. Mm -hmm. So those are the type of things that won her over. And that really touched my spirit. And I realized I don't even know these people. <laughs> Here I am getting upset over a situation that involves two people I don't know anything about. I don't even know the basics about them as individuals or their relationship. So why should I have an opinion about something I know nothing about? So for now, I'm just going to let this young couple be. I'm going to wish them the best. I'm going to assume the best for them. I'm going to assume that our princess is being treated like a queen by her king and that they really have a wonderful relationship. I pray and hope that all this noise and vitriol doesn't make its nasty way into their relationship and cause discord. That really shouldn't be a part of this. I just really hope that everybody can take a step back and understand this is not about you. Let these people live. She seems happy. Send them love and light. Send prayers. Support them. If you really love Simone, that's what she would need from you right now. Okay? So thank you so much for watching. Sorry for my raspy, nasally voice. Uh, hopefully I will continue to get better. I've been drinking lots of water. I've been trying to rest as much as possible. It's not very restful during the holidays. My whole family gets together while continuing to work and keep a full work schedule. So it takes a toll sometimes. It's been years since I've gotten sick, but I guess it was it was due. Um, but um, yeah, but I feel much better. I, I am 50 years old now and uh, um, you know, <laughs> the best is yet to come. That's my motto. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share it. Please leave a like. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think on this whole Simone Biles and her husband thing. And what do you think about this whataboutism that has plagued social media? Do you agree with me? Let me know your thoughts. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hi. We are here at Knott's Berry Farm on the final day of Knott's Merry Farm, which is when they decorate the place for Christmas. Yes. And I'm here with my niece, Julie Valentina. Hello. What do you think about the park so far? I think it's very, very fun. You like it? Yes. We've already been to a couple of the rides. I don't want to take her on too many crazy rides, you know, but I think later we're gonna try one of the fastest roller coasters but we're not gonna go on the crazy ones right yes the ones that go through. yeah we don't want the ones that go on a loop and where we are upside down because that's very scary mm -hmm. for me yes so are we gonna stay all day until the lights come on at night yes i want to okay you brought your breakfast are you gonna eat it or i have my breakfast right here Okay. I have apples and peanut butter sandwich. Here is the peanut butter sandwich. And my apples are over here. Oh, nice. They look delicious. Can I have your water here? Yes, yeah, you can wash it down. Okay, any last message you want to give to the people of the channel? Please like and subscribe to reach 1 million subscribers. Yes, thank you so much. Well, guys, this was us coming to you from Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. We think it's going to be a great day. And hopefully, I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.